folks, welcome to Mascot Friday. We got mascots, we got platformers, we got bitrate issues right off the bat. Woo! Hey, it looks like we're still stable, though. Okay, that's good. May end up dropping some frames, but whatever, it's okay. This is just a once-in-a-lifetime world premiere event. No big deal, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we have something special for you tonight. We do, uh, we It's do. been a good long time since we've had an official, full-ass Mascot Friday lineup, and boy, this is, this is going to make up for it, I think. Uh, at least at first. You'll see. Yeah. Got got something truly special tonight, but first of all, Alex, why don't you thank the folks? I have something to say. Uh, first of all, thank you very, very much to patron of the show, Nick Chaotix, five-month resub. Nick Chaotix says, uh, five months of quality? Games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Basically, yes. Exactly. Um, thank you. And thank you, Nick, uh, for dumping this game. Yeah, we'll uh, get to that in a second. Okay, and thank you, Hexagon Witch, 22-month uh, resub. Thank you, Whoop Fun. Whoop 23 month resub says, uh, leave Straya. <laughs> yeah, let's get Macaw's, uh, let's get him to weigh in on this. <laughs> uh, thank you, Krungo, for the 22 month resub says, brought to you by Spectrum Internet for Gamers. The and, best internet for gamers available. Thank you. And thank you, Nana Kiamano, for, for the seven month resub for saying outhouse, Joey, which hey, is all I'm going to think hey, of. Hey, you're just, you're getting ahead of yourself. What if this is the best game ever made? You don't know. Thank you to Sepasai19 for the 33 holy shit month resub. Multiple threes. That's a lot of threes. Good Many luck. threes. Thanks. Good luck. And thank you, Family Consumer. 38 month holy shit resub. Outback. I love the Bloomin' Onion. Hey, me too. We're all Outback fans here. And it's a good thing, too, because we are hosting the world premiere of Outback Joey, a game Ooh. that was previously undumped, unemulated, and it's now both of those things. But before we get into it, first a little history lesson. Ooh, history. But first... We thank Laugh Boy. Thank you, Laugh Boy, for the eight months. Eight months. Thank eight you. Eight months. All right. So what is this thing? What are we getting ourselves into here? Uh, we're about to play a actual retail released Sega Genesis game. This is not a prototype. This is not an unreleased game. This is a game that was pressed to cartridge in such limited numbers that it was not dumped until earlier this year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> quite a quite a story went behind this game. Uh, first of all, right off the bat, I want to mention that I had absolutely nothing to do with dumping and preserving or emulating this nope. game. Uh, I'm part of a, a preservation group called Lost Levels. I've done a bunch of stuff in the past. This isn't one of them. This is not it. Credit for this goes to friend of the show Nick who dumped this game, as well as... Can you bring up the games list, Alex, real oh, quick? Oh, sure, yes. As well as Mike Pavone, who is the author of Blastem, who has worked tirelessly over the last several months to uh, decompile and figure out just how this game works in an effort to emulate it, because it's not straightforward in the least. How unstraightforward is it? Well, here's the box. Uh -oh. Yeah, so so we're getting ourselves into a little bit more than we bargained for for this thing. Uh, there was a lot I did not know about Outback Joey. Many years ago, all I knew is that it was undumped, and my previous attempts to purchase it were all foiled at the last minute by eBay snipers. I got sniped super hard on this game multiple times. Mm -hmm. That's all changed now, though. But supposedly, way back when, you could go to your local entertainment store... Do, do those ah! exist? Listen, sharper image, those places existed. And you could pick up a heartbeat personal trainer system, which, um, well, how about we look at the back to see what this included? What the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah. So um, it, okay, there's a bike here and a stepper, there's, but there's it doesn't a, come with those, does there's, it? There's literally a lot to unpack here, so... <laughs> Uh, the, the heartbeat training system, it assumes at a base you have some form of exercise equipment, perhaps an elliptical machine, perhaps a, a stationary bike. A Nordic track? A Nordic track, yes, to keep it in the 90s mm -hmm. and relevant, yeah. So you'd buy this, and it would allow you to play a video game that was powered by um, whatever you were exercising with at the time. It did this through all sorts of bizarre things that attached to your exercise bike and yourself. It had a little clip that clipped onto your ear to determine your heart rate. Mm -hmm. It had an optical sensor, which I don't really know where it went. I think it was just like watching how you pedaled your bike or something. or I, I just don't know. And there's two pieces of a controller there. Uh, it's a little bit low resolution, but that D-pad, I think, actually only goes left and right. And yeah. notice that it only has two buttons instead of the standard three or six buttons on the Sega Genesis. And look at that beautiful thing at the top right corner. Doesn't that just look like a weird, weird, weird Sega Genesis Model 1? Don't you think? 
How about we uh, we take a look at what it really looks like? The fuck is that? Real quick, some info from chat. Um, <laughs> so you know the the sensor monitor was probably optic uh, the optical sensor probably was checking the rotation of the bike tires. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So because yeah, it feeds two different things into the game: your heart rate and whatever the optical sensor senses. This thing here <laughs> looks like a really good attempt at making a Sega Genesis Model One cake. Uh, not so much a good attempt at uh, making a good console. <laughs> if you're familiar with what a Sega Genesis Model 1 looks like, uh, the power, the reset button, the volume slider, they're all there. Cartridge slot is where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But I guess they just replaced the top of the shell with whatever this is. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look too professionally put together, uh, in my opinion. I'm not an exercise equipment manufacturer. I That's love not me. the slope of that those buttons are on. To me... It looks handmade. It looks like they couldn't have made more than a few of these. And even though the actual estimated number of these things that exist in the wild is a thousand, the number of Outback Joey carts contradicts that, uh, suffice to say, hugely, because as far as I know, there's only like maybe six or seven of those accounted for. Never mind the hardware, which is even rarer. The Outback Joey carts, there's a few of those, but the hardware, forget about it. So this thing might have found its way into the hands of reviewers. It might have gotten a limited release. For all I know, there's 995 of these in a warehouse somewhere in California or something. <laughs> but anyway, ending our history segment, uh, just this past year, two cartridges managed to get found and dumped around uh, the same time. One of them was dumped personally by our friend Nick, who we mentioned. Thank you. And then also the author of Blastum got a hold of a dump and uh, worked to start emulating this thing. Thank you. Seriously, now, I'm, I'm thank giving you. you all this setup. I'm, I'm giving you all this setup here because when you see the game itself, you're going to be very confused, <laughs> as I was. I was confused for a good two or three hours. I put into this game, and I still have not beat level one. Uh, just to just to give you some idea of what we're in for. So, should we do this? Should we show off the world premiere of Outback Joey? You know what? I think we should. Yeah, let's okay, do it. We're loading the ROM again. We're using Blastum. Thank you again. Oh, right. Yes, uh, the ROM will be out there shortly, somehow. It's only playable in the newest nightly build of the Sega Genesis emulator, Blastum. You have to go into the directory and find the latest uh, build. Like, whenever there's a change to the source, it automatically uploads, and yeah, whatever. You can yeah. find it. So yeah, get the nightly. So. Here it is. Outback Joey. There it is. Earlier, we took bets as to whether this game would use the gym sound engine. Uh, it, it sounds like it uses the gym sound engine. It, it does have that gem jam. It's uh, a gym vibe. jam. Yeah. Oh, BBH, I wish it was that heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a bigger and more expansive story than you might be expecting from this exercise-driven platformer. It involves uh, the Australian Outback, the Australian Outback, uh, the native peoples, and yeah. of course Outback Joey himself. Yeah, uh, it's it's 1993. It's not going to be respectful. I just want to just yeah. Chat's already like yikesing it. A little bit. It may, it's maybe a little yikes. this is 1993. There's going to be some yikes in there. <laughs> Outback Joey, look at him. Oh, thank you, Simon, for the 36-month resub. What it, what it is, Retro Pals? Hold on, hold on. Okay, whoever's spamming stops. Okay, what is it, Retro Pals? Uh, classic friends and vintage companions. Here's the 36 months of world premieres and badly thought through attempts to turn 16-bit <laughs> consoles into exercise equipment. I don't see what's so badly thought out about this. This is perfect. Thank you, though. Thank you. All right, so... Oh, man, I'm going to have to use the keyboard for this. I don't even know how this game controls, even after playing it for multiple hours. We're going to get this through. We're going to get through this together. Uh, if you have any backseating to do, good fucking luck, because you don't know how this is played, and neither do I. Yeah. <laughs> to start the game, you hit the equivalent A button. I think the, um, the controller packed in with the Heartbeat console emulates the A and B buttons on the Sega Genesis controller. Thank you, Feltimp, for gifting out a sub to Codeman38. Oh, you beat me to it. Thank you. Let's do it. All right. Ooh. Here we are. We're doing it. All right. 
Let's yeah. register a new player. Cool. We're gonna use this one. What's our name? Um, we are Outback Joey, from what I understand. But I guess our name should be something normal, like, uh... It's just gonna be Joey. Joe. Joey Jojo Joseph. Ooh, how about Jojo? We'll get the... Jojo, yes! We'll get yes. those anime people clicks. people like that? Do you like that? Is this a Jojo? Yes, it is. Is this, is this what the Jojo's like? Now, how old are we? We older. Older. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah! Yeah, older! You think... Will it... Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no! You're a baby now! Oh, don't no. do this! Jojo reverted to baby form. No, 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 no! Jojo, get older! Now, I actually don't know if this has any bearing whatsoever on the game, so I'm just gonna go it ahead should. and leave it on uh, the, the the standard 30. Like, it should, because you you have different heart rates at different ages, so... There's male and female. No option for uh, kangaroo, unfortunately. And here you get to set up your workout. You can warm up, you can work out, and you can cool down. Ooh, I love cooling down. Yeah, me too. Let's do a warm up. Okay. Uh, actually. No, let's do this. Oh, I see. We're setting this all up ahead of time. Okay, okay. so five minutes of warm up, 20 minutes of workout, five minutes of cool down. Okay, so Stay they're still. gonna measure your heart rate. Okay, so this implementation may end up changing depending on future releases of Blastem, but the way it's configured right now is the X and Y buttons change your heart rate. So if you push Y, oh. we can pump it on up, and you can push X to make it go back down. Oh no, it's what's what's a good resting heart rate, Alex? That's not it. I I recently started beta blockers because my heart rate was over ninety. It's not anymore. Oh, I'm it's not 60. supposed to be under ninety. It's supposed to be it's supposed to be resting. Sixty is good. Sixty. One seventy six. One seventy six sounds good to me. No. Oh, honey, no. Hunt, no. No. Let's go with a nice solid ninety. Let's say. Right. Yeah, Eighty four. Yeah, that's what I meant. So imagine my surprise when I booted up this game after years of searching for it, not knowing anything about it, and it's a fucking mascot platformer. I just realized, oh no, we're gonna have to cover this, aren't we? And here he is, Outback Joey in all his glory. Your heart rate's going down. He's uh, sitting there until you're, um, you have to adjust whatever is being looked for by the optical uh, device. Yeah, check your feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now, to uh, to adjust what the optical device sees, you push Z and C in the current implementation of Blastem. So, um, yeah, there we go. And once he starts going, he automatically goes, and he gets tired real easy. I was going to say, can you increase your heart rate to... All right, let's do it. Yeah, here we go. Okay, go. heart rate is, is climbing again. Joey is happy. Uh, now, now he's not. Oh. Yeah, so... Um, I've faced difficulties with this game. We'll, we'll see We'll see just how well I can do at this. The problem with Joey is when he gets like this, he doesn't jump very high at all. He can no longer jump kick, and that's a big problem because jump kicking is his major form of attack. What I found is by decreasing the heart rate, he gets going and he keeps going for a good while. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm just gonna pump up that heart rate a little bit, get that over 100. Uh-oh. It sounds kind of funky, but it actually works out, believe it or not. So now, once it starts to go down, he should go back to his usual bouncy self. There he goes. Okay, now we can play the video game. This is normally how he moves. He's very expressive. Uh, he is so expressive! Yeah, a lot of his hurt animations in particular remind me a lot of the character Ratfink. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that. Yes! God, Very yes. Ratfink vibes. The Ed Roth style art. That's it, yeah, Hot Rod. So you go up here and check it out. He's a boxer now. You do not want to box a kangaroo. They will fuck you up. Oh yeah, kangaroos will kill. Anyone see that match between uh, Outback Joey and uh, what was his name? Fuckface McGee? <laughs> Logan Paul? Yeah, that's... <laughs> I know that. <laughs> so anyway, that's a, that's a power up you get for a limited time. Uh, you have a life meter that's drained by whenever enemies touch you, and you can restore it by picking up the water bottles hidden throughout the level. Hit detection very strange. Uh, gameplay not a focus for this team. 
<laughs> this game controls very strangely, even when you're emulating it in its best possible form and not having to go on an exercise bike. Unfortunately, the boxing glove wears off after a little bit, and he's not too happy about that. Not really? It sends him into a... into an asthma attack? Come on. Jesus is... <laughs> there we go. Maybe if you got asthma, you shouldn't be uh, training with Outback, Joey. You may be, you may want to train with Brocky, the Brachiosaurus on Super Nintendo. I was going to say, there, there's other characters who would, who would help you out. Yeah. Oh, we found another boxing glove, though. I want to know who worked... Did, is there any developer credits, any info about who worked on this? None whatsoever, but in our Discord, people have mentioned that this game shares sound effects with X-Men for the Sega Genesis, which, as far as I know, was internal Sega of America developed. Unless they uh, farmed it out to a sub-license or something. Yeah, because some of these sounds... Oh, oh, Misty says... She found the credits. Okay, Misty. Ooh, ooh, spill it. Spill, we need to know. Western Technologies. Uh-huh, what else do they do? X-Men. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> well, mystery solved. Thank you. Seriously, thank you. Excellent. Glad we could solve that in record time. So this is neat. You go left or right. Um... Just imagining yourself on the exercise bike or the elliptical or whatever. What you're doing is with your left hand, you're pushing left or right with the little D-pad. And on your right hand, you're controlling the two buttons, which in this case are kick and jump. Now, when you're in the air, you can push the kick button to kick. But I like this. You can just push the jump button twice to do the same thing and do a dive kick. It's actually very effective. You want to know how Misty found this? How so? The credits are in an ASCII file in the ROM. They're ASCII in the ROM. That's wonderful. Wow. All right. Not even uh, encrypted or anything. Not even hidden under a variable width font. That's so it's just good. There. Cool. All right. We're going to try and beat level one. And after that, I'm going to need a lot of help. I'm just going to show you my findings. And uh, if we can get further than this, good. If not, that's entirely unsurprising. What are people's thoughts of this so far? About seeing the amazing Outback Joey in action for the first time in, what, uh, 18 years? No, 28 years. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that's a long time, Outback Joey. Uh, let's see. Questions. Joey makes a terrible face when he loses his shorts. He does. Uh, yes. Why does Joey get tired? Because he's exercising. That's the part I don't get, because supposedly, based on the game's documentation, he would get tired when your heart rate starts to drop, right? Like, you want to keep the, the old the old ticker pumping. Yeah, you do. That's, that's what cardio is all about. And yet, uh, at least, again, in the current implementation in Blastum, it's when your heart rate is actively decreasing that Joey starts to move. Now, I've managed to change that through adjusting what is referred to as cadence, that is uh, what the optical sensor is sensing. Yeah, like there I push the optical sensor and he's just fine. I can also make him stop in place in case you want to stop and think about things. Oh, come on. Joey! Joey! Oh, now he's tired. I don't have time for this. There's bats. Joey, we can't stop here. <laughs> You've got 19 more minutes of exercise left. <laughs> yeah, they keep putting more minutes hey, on the timer to punish you. if your me. heart rate is 22 or 18... They should call 911. Like, it should no, the game's like, no, you're fine. You're good. It's okay. You're you're at uh, 13 BPM and dropping, but you're doing good. Dr. Jordo, yes. Joey works did just it. like Crank. Beat level one, and according to the chief, uh, we didn't do it. So. That's as far as I've gotten. Now, if you remember the, <laughs> remember the storyline at the beginning of the game, yeah, sorry, mate. Sorry. Apparently, what you got to do... Your heart rate is two! Yeah, it's good. It's turn, it turned green up there. Your heart rate is zero! Apparently, what you need to do is collect all the pieces of the talisman in each level, or else you got to repeat it. Um, I know where two of these pieces are. Can you help me to find the rest? I will do my best. Okay. Oh, we're our, our BPM is zero. How are you... Let's try and make it go down more. Dick Cheney mode activated Revenant. <laughs> All right, I hit the um, the decrease heart rate button, and it's no longer doing anything. It looks like once you bottom out at zero, Outback Joey just, he's, he's not going. He just refuses to go. Would the cadence affect anything? Okay, we can make him stop. Okay. He's... Oh, that's no good. 
Okay, so right now the game is sensing that I'm pedaling on the bicycle, but it's not sensing a heart rate. It should, as Alex said, be calling the hospital at this moment. Yes, yes. <laughs> but still don't fully understand how this works. Now, I know the first piece of the talisman is, like, what, right at the beginning of the level? God, I hate how you get pushed back when you get hit. I'm thinking this game should be way more lenient than it is, because you're pedaling on a fucking bicycle while you're playing it. Tell you what, let's let's cheat the system. Here's what okay. we're going to do. I'm increasing my heart rate. Wow, to four. Okay, we're just going to park him in the corner. We got 17 minutes on the clock. I can afford to do this. How high does this heart rate go? Let's push it as far as we can go. Oh, no. Yeah, we're, we're Herman Munstering this kangaroo. Because <laughs> I'm thinking, um, you know, he... He just, he moves normally when the heart rate is actively decreasing. So what I want to do is max it out and then slowly have it decrease over the course of the level so we don't have to manage heart rate BPM. Again, this kind of runs counter to how you'd expect the game to work, but who even knows at this current state? 200 BPM! Um, oh yeah. Again, call Let's go for max hospital. 300. <laughs> bump it up, bump it up. What animals have a heart rate of 220 BPM, do you think? Uh, hummingbirds. I'm sorry that I just... <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you could fill us in. Oh do yeah, rabbits, rabbits, yeah, rabbits might. Sense. I'm just holding down the old increase heart rate button. It looks like it's increasing much more slowly now, so I think it might top out around 240. Okay, Solar Panels mentions, uh, is the heart rate relative to your input before the level? It turned red quickly, and you did put a pretty high value at the base. Should I have not done that? The oh. thing is, I've only ever seen the meter at the top turn green when it's at 10 BPM or less, no matter what uh, setting I put in, so I can't really explain that. Revenant wants you to unlock max 300. Boo! <laughs> okay, so Hummingbird, you want to know their, their BPM? Yeah. Uh, 1,200. That's a lot. That's insane. I don't think we can get that high. And there's some kind of analog component to how the heart rate increases and decreases in the implementation in Blastum, so be aware of that. It looks like we're at the ideal situation right now, which is the heart rate is very slowly decreasing. Hopefully that'll be enough to take us through the whole level. Now I know in one of the early beehives there's one of the, um, the amulet pieces. Let's see if we can find that. Uh, welcome Trough, this is, uh, Outback Joey, it's... Yep, this game just got dumped, it's newly emulated, and it's perfect. It's the perfect video game. There it is. It's, uh... Danny's heart rate is going from 200 to zero, it's, and... I'm improving. Game... It was 240, but I'm now at a healthy 202. <laughs> now, do you have to collect all the waters, or...? I've only ever found two of the pieces, one at the start of the level and one at the end. I think, I hate to say this, but I think they're just kind of in random enemies. By which I mean the same enemies every time, but they're not really marked or anything. Oh, come on, Joey. There we go. He's back up. He's back in business. I like that there's heart rate tech that you have to do. Yeah. Imagine having to do this in real life, though. Can you kick that rock? It looks kickable. Oh, good question. I guess mm, not. Apparently okay. not. I just... Don't make a kickable rock like that. Don't make it look kickable. That's unfair to me. Is that a dingo? There's a talisman. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, I didn't find that one before. It looks like there's... Holy fuck, what was that? It was a scorpion. <laughs> I've never seen that before. I'm learning new things. Okay, okay, I'm excited now. That means that I know where three of the talisman pieces are. We just need to find that fourth one, and we got 13 minutes to do it. There's some nasty-looking bugs in this game. I was gonna say, the bugs look gnarly. I'm, I'm gonna say that's probably accurate to the actual Outback, because it has many large and deadly creatures in it. Hey, remember when that one episode of Peppa Pig was banned from Australia because it was like, don't worry about spiders? Yeah. And they're like, no. No, here we worry no, about spiders. No, you should. You probably should worry about spiders in the old outback. Man, that one spider was unusual because it actually did show the piece of the talisman in it. I wonder if the uh, the fourth piece that I'm missing will also tell me what enemy it is. In the meantime, I'm just gonna kill everyone just All right. to be safe. Sounds sounds good. Yeah. Just clear out the outback. All these spiders and birds and 
dudes with hatchets? I guess some ICP fans found their way to the outback. Hey, you know, maybe this is a safe space for them, and I respect that. <laughs> Just scouting out a, a new place for the gathering. Mm-hmm. Oh, I have new numbers up there. What do those mean? Um, okay, I don't know what the THR means, but I do know that the 1231 is your time left. The other ones, I don't know. Can we switch out the THR for a THC? Is the two the amount of talisman pieces you have? Oh, maybe. That remains to be seen. Now, luckily, the screen locks when you get to the end of the level, so I'm not going to be surprised by the, uh, the chief telling me to start over. All right. So we can at least retrace our steps if I end up missing the damn thing. God! The way it locks you in place after you take a hit, and then you get sent off a cliff. It's, it's frustrating even when you're playing it at its best. Nevertheless... <laughs> Never mind when you're on a fucking bicycle. This is way too much for me to juggle right now. Yeah, is is THR target heart rate? That's a good question. Is my target heart rate one? <laughs> I think that's how many times you've hit your target heart rate. Or maybe that is your target heart rate. I don't... Honey, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, your target heart rate should not be one. And anyone in, in the audience, your target heart, heart rate should also not be one. Okay, so I should aim for two at least. Perhaps three. Yeah. Let's not push it too hard, though. I'm just, I'm just getting my regimen started. CTHR is a Hollywood Reporter. Okay. Let's yeah, explore we'll the know. bottom level again, because I, there's stuff to kill down here. I'm really scared of getting generated, though, because that's a thing that can. Excuse this me. This is so. Excuse me. Look. Excuse me. They're going to push you to a. Thank you. Um. I. Well, oh no, oh no, okay, okay. He's not taking damage, it didn't look like. Let's just leave him alone. Maybe maybe we don't need to interact with that guy. Okay, Alex, give me your best outback jokes. Okay, I'm sorry. I just I don't I don't we have like people from Australia in our chat. I don't wanna offend them. I love them. Okay. So I have to offend Outback Joey himself. Uh, he's a piece of shit. I hate him. He sucks. This piece of equipment barely works. And oh um, he didn't sell any. Wow, good fucking job. During the time of the Nordic track, you couldn't sell any of these? You couldn't even sell these to some fucking gyms? They should have tried again at the P90X era. Fucking this is pathetic. Genuinely <laughs> pathetic. Do you have, Did you even have any of these at Epcot or any of the other like exhibits for weird video game technology that was also exercise equipment. I bet not. Ooh. Ooh, don't hurt me. Oh, I don't I don't like that. Don't hurt me. I'm just a a, a normal kangaroo. Oh. oh. Oh, there's environmental puzzles. What? And you found a talisman. Oh my god, there it is. There's the last one. I didn't know where that was. Okay, now I need to just find the one that I found before. And I know it was in the upper half of the level. Oh my god, folks, we are gonna see level two. We are gonna see level two of Outback Joey. I don't think anyone has seen that shit. I heard about gay rat and oh, you got gay rat invasions in Australia? That's cool. Okay. I'll go. I'll go. So this is gonna take approximately forever to uh to finish this level, but cool. I just had a brilliant idea. This is a free meme anyone can use. You can use it right now and get upwards of a hundred thousand retweets. Are you ready for this? That's pretty good. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Maybe it's only funny to me, but okay. anyway, here it goes. Do you remember the, the hit film, Kangaroo Jack? Yes. Do you remember how the tagline was, he's taking the money and he's not giving it back? Yes, I remember that. <laughs> That's stupid. It's very, very stupid. Of course stupid. he's not giving it back. He's a kangaroo. Anyway, I thought I would combine this mm -hmm. with um, the new hit Attack of the Clones meme. <laughs> you know... <laughs> And you're giving it back, yes, yes, right? Yes, exactly. So so Anakin says, back. I've taken the money. And Padme says, you're giving it back, right? And he just looks. You're, you're giving it back, right? There you go. There's a new hit meme. Anyone can become a superstar right now. Yeah, uh, they didn't make... I don't know if they made an animated series off of Kangaroo Jack, but they did make a cup. They did make at least one uh, animated special, Good Day USA. Yeah, that dude got around. I watched that whole movie, you know? Why? I don't know. I don't yeah, have a good fair. reason for that. Are there unlimited enemies? Because I already forgot where the last god dang amulet piece No, is. Danny, don't say that. Don't. It's fine. I'm pretty sure it's at the, the second half of the level. I know it's in the top area. Health looking good. Joey. 
Joey, don't you do it. Don't do me like this. And to think, this is just the warm-up. <laughs> we haven't gotten to the actual exercise routine yet. One of y'all gotta drop an amulet piece. Please drop an amulet piece. If, if Danny can't do this, I'm going to fucking cry. Please, I can't cry on air. <laughs> Not again. Can you kick that? Yeah, that's the same shape as the other kickable rocks, so... Oh, jeez. Oh, Joey. Joey! Okay. I guess not. I cannot even begin to describe just how bad the controls are in this. Even in ideal situations when you're not on an exercise bike. Again, I just want to emphasize that. It's a pain in the ass to play even when you're not exercising. There. However, however, this is a retail-released game, so I think it is fair game for our mascot ranking list, don't you think? It is. 100% this is a rankable game. Yeah, we don't count unreleased or unfinished games, but this is uh, neither of those things. It got released. At least six copies were sold that I can account for. I don't know why... Okay, so Joey gets exhausted sometimes, Prof of Luxury. I know what it looks like to you, but he's, he's just getting exhausted. It's normal. It's normal. He's not a freak. Maybe that's it. Maybe he's just getting a little too excited, so you gotta <laughs> lower his heart rate, and that's why it works that way. We're still figuring things out. It, for okay, all I know, it may, it may work like that. Fuck, Joey. Joey, you work with me. Multiple people saying maybe we shouldn't rank it because we're not playing it as intended. I'm obje- I'm objecting to that because this is such a monumental effort that we have to rank it. I don't see any other way we could possibly rank this. Maybe if we track down the original hardware itself. Maybe if you <laughs> somehow got me in shape. And... There it is! There it is! Get oh, it! Get shit. it! Oh shit! It's we're in go mode right now. Okay. People who play randomizers, this is uh, Outback Joey's go mode. We're doing it. We got we got six whole minutes to reach the end of the level. We got a heart rate of at least fifty eight and dropping. Chat mentioning because maybe you set the target heart rate at one? That could also... That may yeah, be okay. negatively affecting. Yes, yes! Oh my god, I've never seen this! Holy crap! Look at yes. them! Yes! Hey, I just want to say Outback Joey is really cool looking. Ooh. Okay, I feel like I've done a workout. <laughs> yeah, yeah! What the fuck? Holy crap. Congratulate yourself, that was amazing. I am I'm patting myself on the back right now. What a photo. What look at this pixel art, dude. Oh dude, look at this pixel art. I love I love the way Joey looks. He looks You think wonderful. you get to meet McCall at the end? <laughs> I hope so. Oh, level two! <gasps> Different environment? Oh my god! Look at him! He's it's Croc! Croc is here! Looking more like his dad Gex than ever before. Wow. Special guest Croc. Oh god, he's armed! No! No! No, I'm panting. Please. This this game has got this game is starting to get a furry vibe and I like it, thank you. I love these little critters. I love these critters. Boy, I will say, these sprites are very large and quite expressive. More so than I would expect for a game that sold six copies. <laughs> Feel kinda bad for the There's collapsing platforms. How dare you? Boy, I hope that guy wasn't holding the talisman piece. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, wouldn't wouldn't that be hilarious, huh? Sir, are we gonna have to do like you're gonna have to do a full playthrough of this at one point. Not it. I'm not it either. It's gotta be someone else. Alright, someone's gotta do a full playthrough of this. Who is going to be the Outback Joey world record speedrun holder? How do you even What is this? Alright, fine. The stairway's just broken. The crocodile people are very cute. They are so it adorable. I love them. They're very expressive. This character artist. They're going places. They probably went places. Who are they? I don't know. All right. Multiple people volunteering to do this. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna hold you to a count to this. Uh, oh, there's a there's a big one. I like the big one. There's a, one there's a big, big chubby one. All right. Wife City and Blab are both taking up the duty. The okay. arms of, of... If we get like 20 or 30 this. people each attacking... 
uh, levels of this game, we can eventually complete it. Are we gonna like form a commune just to fucking? I mean, I was just gonna. Joey? I was just gonna do a folding at home kind of thing, but if you want to go the distance and make a full nerd commune. Oh, okay, no, no, we're not doing a nerd commune. Those things, no. Who but... wants to join? Those always turn out well. I was gonna, <laughs> no, no. I was gonna say we could, we could just get a home. It could be like one of those like. Those gamer homes where all the famous like esports people live. Can we have like an esports home instead? You did miss a e talisman from earlier, by the way. I did. All yeah. right, we got to go back. It was I forget where it was, but it was it was way at the beginning. Okay, we'll go search for it. Yeah, the Outback Joey Hype House. That's it exactly. <laughs> That's what we'll call it too. Well, yeah. So just uh, and but the thing is, we can't do it unless we need a unless we have a corrupt manager. Mm, okay. Um, so whoever wants to be our corrupt manager, let us know. Ah. You burned to death. Thank you, Code Man, to let us know that the character designer of this is Mike Delisa, Disa or something. Uh, sorry about that. Who's credited on two games on Moby Games: Trivia Pursuit on the Sega Genesis, Sega CD, and Spider-Man: The Animated Series for Genesis. Are you kidding me? Trivial Pursuit on Sega CD? That game has lineage with the uh, Philips Sidewalk Corporation, who, of course, made our favorite game, Wacky World of Miniature Golf. Really? It all ties together. It's Holy all connected. Holy shit, it's no wonder you're playing CDI today. Yeah, I knew that. But uh, thank you for reminding me of that thing I already knew. That's cool, though. Wait, are, for real? Is that the same Bruce? Because, okay, apparently, according to Electric Boogaloo, one of the artists in this game is Bruce Straley, who you may remember from the fucking Last of Us. Down. It's down. You just passed it. Down? Okay. Yeah. Well, we only have two minutes here. Actually, I'm curious to see what see happens it? when the time runs out, so we'll... Oh, God, this is going to be a pain, isn't it? Yeah, I'm also curious about what happens when time runs out. Maybe it just ends the exercise? Tells you to start over tomorrow? Like, you did you did well enough. Okay, that's where you got to fall from. So keep in mind you got to fall there. Uh, keep in mind the flame pillar is, in fact, an instant kill. I don't think you have lives in this game, so that's nice, but... Remains to be seen what happens when the timer runs out. Still, it, if I were to tell you there was an unreleased exercise game for the Sega Genesis that uses uh, stationary bikes, you would not think it was a platformer, right? Like, no. That just seems a little bit too sophisticated for <laughs> whatever they're trying to do. And yet they announced compatibility with future Sega Genesis games. This thing was supposed to be compatible with uh, the absolutely terrible Mindscape game Outlander. As well as your friend and mine, Earthworm Jim. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? This game, for as tough as it is, Earthworm Jim is a million times more difficult. Playing that thing while, while on an exercise bike with a thing clipped to your ear. Some other thing clamped to your foot. I don't, I don't like playing... I, it's hard enough for me to play games already. The idea of having to play games with shit clamped to me, it's like, that's torture. Yeah, the more clamps, the better. Uh, happy Friday, everybody, etc., etc. <laughs> yeah. So right when I found out this was a platformer, I immediately scheduled the earliest possible mascot Friday we could have. And here it is. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Listen, Why does this look so high effort, dude? It is! <laughs> they had, and the characters they, look so good! They had to have thought that this thing would sell like 100,000 units, not like six. It's, it's, you know, because there was an exercise equipment boom at the time, so it makes sense in context. You know, there was a Norda track and the the whole, you know, the leftovers of the 80s exercise aerobic boom still happening. Yeah. I wanted to see an aerobic video starring Outback Joey. <laughs> Joey, you fuck up. Stop it. Joey, be normal. We're on... Uh, the timer looped around to five. Because you're at your cooldown now. Oh, those numbers up there, they were representing where in the workout we were. Oh. And those numbers have disappeared now, so, okay. So you've got four minutes left. Man, we are figuring this out in real time. This is the, the stream is the Rosetta Stone of Outback Joey. <laughs> it's going to be the standard of all future playthroughs. I love that tubby crocodile. I do too, I they're so nice. I can't stand how good that is. Also, it looks like the talismans have been more uh, visible in this level. That's that's nice. I like being able to find the things that let me beat the level. 
Hey, I love the way that they stick their tongues out when you kick them. Yeah. Oh my god, are we gonna beat level two? If you beat level two, I swear to god. Before this stream, I just knew there was no way I'd beat level one, because I went through that level like five or six times. And yet here we are, about to beat level two, maybe. Dreams do come true. I love that band. Yeah, I love same. that look. Oh no, they have did you see they have the sorry mate thing? They, they did. Yes! And it's looming above you like the I don't oh. like the sound of that. You've got a sword of Damocles, babe. <laughs> Australian sword of Damocles is just a weight that says sorry mate on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, unfortunately we're running out of heart BPM, so I'm gonna lower our heart rate just a little bit more. It's it's fine. This is how you're supposed to do it, right? Yeah, it works. Just gotta keep my health up. Unfortunately, if you die in a level, you lose all your talisman pieces, and that that's no good. Is this the end? Okay, we still got more of the level. I think there's gonna be that fourth talisman piece around here somewhere. My gamer senses are kicking in. I am... See, I have gamer senses, but not exercise senses. You need to have both to progress in this game. Oh, that's that's fair, yeah. Does like you, anyone have... I guess some people have exercise, you know, whatever. Some people supposedly exercise. I'm... I... I'm supposed to. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, now what you can defeat fuck? him with a rock, remember. Use the rock to defeat King Croc. Huh? Don't you remember that from the previous uh, screen when you beat the level? It had a thing on top that said, use the rock to defeat King Croc or something. Well, I'm glad you remember. Yeah, so go up and find a rock and kick it at the croc. But I only have 19 uh, beats per minute. Well. Oh, that doesn't sound good, does it? Your heart should at least beat once a second. Okay. Maybe it's over there. Then. Herp. Um, Where is this fucking rock? What rock? A flying rock! Uh-huh! Okay, you need a flying rock? Well... Ooh, one more hit and I'm dead. I'm not liking the looks of this. Maybe it was that, uh, sorry mate thing that I was supposed to drop on him. Oh, man. Oh. And you lost your talisman pieces. Yep, this is the agony of Outback Joey, compared to the ecstasy which we were experiencing over the last half hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he got burnt to a crisp. Pretty gory. Alright, so I don't think we're finishing this level, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the time run out and see what happens at the end of our workout period. There's a whole lot more to this game, I get the feeling. Um, no idea how many levels there are, just how much playtime there is here. I don't even know how much is accessible, because as far as I know, no one has ever finished this game. <laughs> there may be a game-ending glitch at some point. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting my heart rate up so I can lower it again. But let's spend our last few moments with Outback Joey thinking of the good times before he gets sent to the Outback Steakhouse. Are we eating him? We eating Joey? Yeah, they serve kangaroo there. You know that I can't check because this is this is on the PC. Yeah, you can't just open a Chrome window. I can't like open a Chrome window and go... Everyone, out everyone tell Alex about all the delicious kangaroo entrees you've enjoyed at uh, the Outback Steakhouse. I mean, you can, you can... What do you think their steaks are made from? Jeez. I, I guess fair, fair, fair enough. I, I, yeah, Wife City, you can, you can head over to fucking Outback Steakhouse and I guess they'll hook you up. Maybe it's a secret menu. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's some kind of secret code word you gotta use to get that, uh, that kangaroo steak. Kangaroo steak is real. You can go eat kangaroo steak. It's apparently fine. Mm-hmm. You can have kangaroo burgers, too, which I have had a kangaroo burger. Is it gauche over there, like eating horses over here? I would assume no. All right, time's up. Jojo, your resting heart rate was 84 beats per minute. You averaged a mile every 24 minutes and 23 seconds, Jeez. folks. Good news, we've beaten the 24-minute mile. <laughs> <laughs> we set a new world record here tonight, and uh, see you tomorrow. See you, see you tomorrow? Yeah, that's for tomorrow's workout. Hi. That oh, hay reminds fine. me of Earthworm Jim. Oh, a little bit. It may have mm -hmm. been uh, pitch shifted or something. So, that's the story of a Sega Genesis platformer that uses weirdo exercise equipment to control it. Does it work well? Mmm, gonna say no. 
gonna gonna say no to that one. I am I am not going to believe an article from the millennial snowflake dot com. <laughs> Check your sources, people. No, I'm actually that's <laughs> What do they have to say about it? <laughs> oh my god. That's hilarious. Well, this game's out here, and it'll soon get a wider release uh, through some certain channel. Not going to be me, sorry. <laughs> Once again, I'm claiming not it on that one. But this is emulated. Uh, maybe in the weeks ahead it'll be perfected, and by the time the public full release happens... Alex, come on. No, 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 I'm just fixing something. Okay. <laughs> no, I just need to fix something for myself. Outback Joey. Wow. He's out there. Look at him hop across the outback. He's so good. Oblivious to the, the pains that await him. So what's the future for this game? Do you think uh, they're going to implement a full control hack where you have, like, fine control over your BPM and you can maybe play the game as it was intended? Do you think they're going to simulate an actual uh, exercise bike so you got to hook up your, your Nordic track to your, your PC? Oh, and yeah, this is public. Uh, Nick's been posting this everywhere. Apparently okay. it should be no, no intro soon, so... <laughs> okay. Well, you soon will get a chance to play Outback Joey. Uh, once again, play it on the newest nightly, nightly version of Blastem. That's available for Win32, 64, and I think it's even on Linux. See you Linux freaks. You can also enjoy Outback Joey. Now, I had a feeling this wouldn't last the entire two-hour Mascot Friday stream, so I do have more stuff planned. I'm surprised I got to level two, though. That was cool. What we're going to do is I have something very special. This is an extra special occasion. Mm -hmm. We're going to go from a game that's set in the Australian Outback to a game that was sent to me from the Australian Outback. Courtesy of Frappe Fiasco, we are going to play Lucky Luke for the Philips CDI. I am excited. Thank you, Frappe. Thank you, Frappe. This is a game I tried to play before. CDI would not read it. It, it needs official retail discs in almost all cases. And uh, it got sent over from Australia, and now it's here. That's the story. Okay, I need to fix it. Uh, hook it up. So, Alex, entertain the folks. All right. Uh, let me entertain you. All right. So, I have to I have to do some setup here, too. Yeah, because it says that it's uh, emulation, and, and no way. No way is this emulation. This is... Have you tried emulating Lucky Luke for Philip CDI? None have survived. We have all died. No one left to tell the tale. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I need to change this to original hardware. If it'll let me... There we go. So... So are we all gonna go get, uh... Kangaroo steaks? Yeah. By the way, they sell kangaroo at the supermarket there. Oh, sweet! Mm -hmm. Foster's on me, everybody. That's Australian for beer. That is Lucky Luke. Ready to go, baby. How many people survive uh, emulating the CDI in general? Well, you wonder why CDI emulation is in, is, is in the state it is. It's in the toilet. I shouldn't. That's yeah, not, I said it. I don't want to say it's in the toilet. That's no, the everyone, really, everyone's working as hard as they can. That's why. Everyone's working way too fucking hard. But and, for the time being, we do need an actual CDI for this. And luckily, that's what we got. Here it goes. Now, I totally had this planned. It wasn't just because I had the Philips CDI still hooked up after Multimedia Monday. It just turned out to be very convenient. Everyone at the Outback Joey Steakhouse messaging me, telling me to eat some Outback. <laughs> All right, let me fix this real quick. Now, while Alex could opt out of... Uh, the previous game. I know I can't opt out of this. You're gonna you're gonna play this one. Yep. Now believe it or not, this is one of the most visually stunning games I've ever seen for Philips CDI. I'm not joking, actually. This so looks, it truly is the Vision Factory. This looks great. It's from. Uh, unfortunately, it's from a studio that's given us problems before. By which I mean it's the studio who made The Apprentice. So uh, have your Rolo at the ready, just just in case. There you go. There he is. You know, this looks good. It just, it's fine. This isn't what the erotic bakery promised me. <laughs> Here you go, Alex. Oh, thank you. All right. Yeah, the babe game. 
Okay, it's time for Lucky Luke. Please, Luke. Luke, please. Now this first screen here is just a series of images showing off all your favorite Lucky Luke moments. This character been in a whole lot of video games, most of them 50 hertz. Because <laughs> this is a Belgian comic that is especially popular in France and other parts of Europe. There's Super Nintendo games. I don't think there's a Genesis game. But there is a CDI exclusive game. This is not a port of an existing Lucky Luke game. It is its own animal. Okay. Audio looking good. Mm -hmm. yep. Looks good okay. to me. Look at all those levels. Look at this expansive oh, video game for the Philips CDI. It's for the... I I am... I... Hey, there's the babes. Oh my god, it is the babes. Wait, they're just, they're just showing their underwear. They're not even... Okay. Okay, guys. Okay. Listen, this is a place in France where the women do wear pants. <laughs> Look at this game. Isn't this stunning? This is a Philips CDI game. Look at this. You've seen games that run at like 10 frames per second and couldn't have music and sound effects and the jumps were delayed by like five seconds. And then you see this. This is gorgeous. I like that you can hold up and just shoot a guy right in I the face. I do like that. I can I kinda can shoot him right in the face. Now if you're new to the show, Mascot Friday is we're is a show where we rank all the classic platformers of the past against one another. So while you're watching this, keep in mind whether you think it's better or worse than Outback Joey. Just the hugest sprites. I don't think I've ever seen a CDI game with this big of a character sprite. And it's pretty fluid for what it is, too. Like, Alex, can you attest that it's actually pretty responsive? Yeah, this actually looks pretty good. Yeah. Handgun. Hey, Handgun. Don't, don't, don't shoot me, I'm nice. Actually, I don't think Lucky Luke is very nice. He's yeah, he, he says star when he picks up a star, not stars. That's, that's another character. He does great. talk a lot. Grapes and bullets. Bullets. He should say. He should. He should. And again, let us know if it's too loud or too loud. I know that this game has, looks like the audio is kind of weird. It's all over the place, especially when the music pops in. But... Yeah. Alright, early reactions say this might, in fact, be better than Outback Joey. It's uh, certainly more playable. You don't gotta hook up a Nordic track to the CDI to do it. Real surprise, there's not more exercise entertainment in the Philips CDI library. Yes, especially the Philips CDI. There's you multiple think... games about the joy of sex and not a single game about the exercise. The joy of exercise? <laughs> exactly. That's why we're all in the state we're in today. Honestly, that's true. Philips CDI just ruined a whole generation of children. Okay, fine, I will kill you. Sex is exercise? Okay, fair. Okay, stop it. <laughs> it's true, but got I got a shotgun. Point is, Philips CDI has an expansive library. And this game here, at least in terms of visuals and first impressions, this may be one of the best Philips CDI games. Oh god, you just shotgunned that guy in the face. Alex is unimpressed. Eh. You've been playing too many open world games. You're like, if I'm not murdering a hundred dudes in ten <laughs> seconds, I don't care. I've... I don't mur... There's a day-night cycle! That's such a cool effect! How did they do that? I was gonna say, no, the... The only... The only game I've been playing is American Truck Simulator, and you can't kill people in that. I've tried. You really... You can't run over Damn. people. You, you can't do anything. Damn. Damn. That, Damn! That was a real-time palette shifting effect. On Sega Genesis, they had to hide that. I can think of, um, what was that game? Mickey Mania? Where the first level slowly transitions from black and white to color. It had to, like, uh, hide the background layer while it did that. But here... What, what wizards were working at this studio? What horny wizards were working at the creators? Very horny wizards, yes! <laughs> the creators of The Apprentice. Uh, if you're unaware of The Apprentice, uh, check our clips. There's always some horn dog clip in that uh, moment every couple weeks. They are, and they're always—it's always number one. It's always number one, and you know what? 
God bless, I guess. Yeah, horn, horn wizards, that's what you call them. Come on, die, dude, die. Thank you. Oh, this does have a Gunman Clive sort of uh, appeal to it, doesn't it? It was also a uh, side-scrolling running gun. Is Gunman Clive Lucky Luke's son? Yes. And they don't talk to each other. Okay, Codeman38 explains uh, why this game may be so technically amazing. These are from Atari ST demo sceners. <gasps> that tracks. You don't you don't fuck with those microcomputer uh, demo sceners. Is that a microcomputer? I don't know. They're they're just they're just too powerful. They're too strong. I would never fight them. I just want to be clear that if they're watching me, I'd fight them. I will not. Please don't <laughs> please don't fight me. I expect more bouncy text and more uh, arpeggios in the music. But uh, I can see how this is inspired by the demo scene. So I love this. I don't know if you can tell, but I've been having a great time. Yeah, you having fun? Yes. It's pretty simple. It's fairly easy to operate. Usually games with huge character sprites are just kind of clumsy to control. I'm thinking of games like China Warrior, Last Battle. But here we have Lucky Luke putting them all to shame. On the CDI of all things. Oh, I hit a checkpoint. Okay, okay, Atari ST is a micro. Good. I didn't want to sound like a dumbass in front of all the, uh, the demo scenes. You probably got like a thousand of them watching us. Thank you, demo sceners. Yeah, no, Lucky Luke. You, Lucky Luke just getting ruined by turtles out here. Yeah, he hates turtles. I hate turtles. Darn. Actually, I'm I'm indifferent about turtles. Sorry. I'm not gonna get over that. I don't even think the Super Nintendo could have handled that. It would have had to cut to a Batman Forever style loading screen. It said, "Hold on." Oh yeah, and check it out. Sound effects and music at the same time. It can be done. Sorry, Gramps. Oh, Gramps killed me. Never mind. Gramps got you good. Gramps got me real good. Looks like he got one life left. So, if anything, maybe this game's downfall is its difficulty, because, boy, there's a lot of stuff shooting at you, and you're a big-ass target. <laughs> Alex is clearly not turtly enough for the Turtle Club. It's true, I'm not. I unfortunately failed out of the Turtle Club. Darn. Darn. Thing being said about horny wizards, I'm not going to repeat. I'm not Don even... Donkey Kong Country, yes, that also did real-time palette shifts, so, okay. This game, I want to say... Let me look at the cover. When did this come out? I'm going to say this is 95. I will note Frappe sent us a complete and box copy, which I'm going to sell for a tidy profit after this stream. Just kidding. <laughs> 1990? This is a 1996 CDI game, Alex. Look at that lens flare! This definitely is 1996. People were playing on PlayStation, Sega Saturn, N64, but over in the Netherlands and whatnot, people still had CDIs, and they were playing Lucky Luke. I wanna, I wanna keep playing. Can I keep playing? Yeah, why not? Okay. I'll keep myself busy with something uh, Frappe also sent along with Lucky Luke. I'm afraid. Uh, that is the little book of great Aussie slang. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, oh Frappe. no. Oh no. Oh. This is a little tiny book, like one of those pocket Bibles, but it's full of Australian vulgarities. <laughs> okay, um, nothing too offensive, okay, honey? Holus bolus. It means all of it, all at once. Okay, thank God. Thank Hell God. for leather. <laughs> Very fast. That's, so that's, are that's you going to keep reading things that just... Alex, I clicked to a... I, I opened up to a random page and literally just started reading. Hey, you'll be glad to know our bitrate just died entirely. <laughs> Good. Uh, so I'm going to keep playing while we wait for this to come back. Yeah, we're having bitrate issues. It dropped to zero. Zero. I need more than zero <laughs> bits. Did my message get through at least? Mm, God damn it. <laughs> no. Yes, it did. Okay. Well, people at least know that uh, there is a stream happening. Yeah, hell for leather was the kill code. Hell for leather shut down the stream. It really shut down the stream. Um, it's staying at zero for a good long time. Yeah. 
You're missing out on the bunny girls. I know, and I want, you're going to miss them. Wow, full frontal this time. Jeez. No one can hear this. But are you just not going to give us any bits? <sighs> okay. Yeah, this isn't even on Spectrum. This is all on Twitch. There we go. There we go. Lo, yo, yo, yay, 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 yay. I see, I see bits. I see bits. Ah, oh, they're back. The bits are back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, the great book of Aussie slang ate up all of our bit rate, but it looks like we have some bits again. Yeah, Why is the Lucky Aussie Luke... slang. Why is Lucky Luke looking at me like this? He's pointing a gun at you because you're not playing. <laughs> you there. better stream, partner. Okay. I came here to watch a god dang stream. Okay, you'll you'll see your fucking you'll see your damn stream. Okay, bits are slowly making their way through the the pipe. Welcome back, folks. If the stream looks weird, try reloading. Lucky Luke should should also try reloading. Anyway, these turtles. Just before the downtime, I started to read from the little book of great Aussie slang while Alex played through Lucky Luke for the full CDI. Uh, if you missed it, hell for leather means very fast. What do you think hit and giggle means? That's right, it's a social game of tennis, usually among women. Go for the old hit and giggle. Here's an Australian slang, you ready for this? This is a little piece of Aussie slang for the rest of the world. Holy guacamole! Never heard of that before. <laughs> it means uh, expression of surprise or wonderment. Wow. How about this? Happy as Larry. That means extremely happy. What are you standing on? Luke! Oh! I, I oh, was okay. just too happy for Larry. I am happy for Larry. Yeah, I hope the, Larry is doing All the Aussies can uh, confirm whether this is real slang or just something they made up to sell to American tourists. Eh, I mean... When you say that someone hasn't got a blast razzo... That means they don't have a rat. They don't have a rat. That, they, means, that means they're penniless. That means they don't even have a rat because they're so poor. Yeah. What do you suppose a hanger on is? That's right. It's a person who clings to others. Wait. Never, never heard of that. Half of these are just real expressions and the others just like completely made up bullshit. Let's flip to another page. Oh, oh, you're not going to start me at the checkpoint? That's cool. I'm feeling okay. What do you say when you make a production of something? That means be a drama queen. This is just American expressions. No, no. International solidarity with expressions, honey. When you say you want to make custard out of someone, that means you want to beat someone. Darn. Either in a fight or contest. And gun. Slow down. What do you think malarkey Darn. means? <laughs> Don't! No! No, we live in the... This guy's just Ooh. generating me. Don't get generated. Oh, fuck off. Okay. Marriage material. Set of a person who would be suitable to marry. This this book has a lot of filler in it. She's wife material. Like, okay, okay. Wife city. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Packing polenta <laughs> means to be extremely scared. Are you scared right now, Alex? I am packing some strong polenta, yes. God, seriously, like half of these are just southern euphemisms. Well, the South and Australia have a lot in common, let's be honest. If you were to call a group of people a pack of bludgers, that's apparently a, a nasty thing to call a group of people. It shows contempt for others. I'm fine. I'm not angry. Play funny buggers? Don't say that! It means to behave stupidly. They have preggers listed in here. Stars. You made me jump! Okay, I'm fine. I'm normal. Ignoring this. Just going this way. Quick, quick is a wombat on a lazy day. Now there's an Australian expression. That that, that I will say, we don't say in the South. That means a dim-witted person. This is someone we might say, bless your heart to. Okay, okay, thank you for the translation. D depending on context, bless your heart can also be a positive thing. It really, again, it depends. It really depends. I'm getting my ass kicked. This game is fucking hard. 
Here's a bit of Aussie slang you can add to your vocabulary. Rare is rocking horse shit. Very uncommon. That's what that means. Oh. Oh, okay. Rat shit. No Thank good. You. Of very poor quality. And they have an illustration of rats here. This, are they shitting? Um, can I see? Here you go. Those rats look like shit. I love them. If you say someone's ready to drop, that means that they're heavily pregnant. I hate all the pregnancy references. Yeah, I'm trying to look beyond the, uh, the euphemisms for pregnancy. Richard Cranium. Dickhead. I like, hey, the, I like hey, that one. That Australia's one's actually good. good now. I really like that. Well, Alex is pissed. Did you miss the latest sub? Yes, I did. Uh, oh, yeah. No, that was because I was in the whatchamacallit. Thanks, Blab, for the sub. Oh, yeah. Thank <laughs> you for the 17 months. months. I just now noticed it. I'm sorry. I was wrapped up in my Aussie slang. I'm expanding my horizons. You got the shotgun. You know what's shocking? I looked up Foster's in here. It's not in there. I've been lied to. <laughs> you think that would be the, the first definition they put in you, the book of Aussie Slay? think? Swing? Honestly, I cannot believe a, a, any marketing would lie to you. Star. No. No. <laughs> I'm Good night, fucked. bad idea. I hope I've uh, taught you some new euphemisms. A Sanger is a sandwich. If you've been said to see your last gum tree, that means you die. Okay, that's depressing, but the end, but it makes sense. If you shack up with someone, that means to live with them intimately. Intimately, I see. If you had a paneled van, you would call it a shaggin' wagon. Dude, that's that's good. Have you never heard that before? No. Really? That's that's American. Sorry. Okay. I'm alive. I'm alive at this part. It's, it's rarity. <laughs> Boy, let me just read this page to you. I'm not going to read the definitions, just the words that they claim are awesome slang. Um, shebang. Shellacking. Shit a brick. Mm -hmm. Short and curlies. Again, maybe instead of that, maybe we just have a lot in common with Australia. More than we, more than, you know, we're, we're, we're a lot more alike than we, oh my god, Grandpa, I hate you. Yeah, let's focus on what makes us like. We all love Hating Lucky grandpa. Luke. We all love Aussie slang. Okay, okay, I beat Grandpa. Does that count for anything? Does anybody care that I beat Grandpa? Anybody? Trouble and strife is a euphemism for one's wife. Australia, get your shit together. A marriage is a partnership. So, for some reason, that checkpoint is accounting as a checkpoint, and I crave the sweet release of giving the controller to Danny, I guess, after this life. Okay, and I'll hand over the, uh, the book of pregnancy euphemisms. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> is it a pregnancy thing? You look, you, you seem pain. I opened up to a random page. Up the duff means pregnant. Oh. Frappe, while I appreciate your contributions to Retro Pals over the years, I don't know what I'm learning from this. This could be detrimental to my overall education. I was gonna say, who? None of us are getting pregnant here in Austin. Rapid fire. But if you want to wake up a daydreamer, you say, "Wake up, Australia." <laughs> Extra time. What's the John Dory? Means what's the story, Morning darn. Glory. Oh, oh, darn, 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 darn. Dude, look at this illustration. I think that was actually drawn by an Australian. That definitely was. I love the art in this. Okay, good work, Alex. And now we're going to show off what a pro playthrough of Lucky Luke for Philip CDI looks like. Alex got his every man's showcase out of the way. Now it's time for a pro. Okay, okay. And Alex has taken over the Aussie slang book. All right, so I just so you know, I have new glasses hopefully arriving by July 1st so I could read this better, but first thing I see is mad as a cut snake, which means, guess, what do you think it means? Uh, pregnant. No, crazy. 
Oh, okay. Okay, we've got... Oh, no, I opened up to the Forbidden page. No. Okay. Those girls are seriously just ripped straight from The Apprentice. I'm pretty sure that was a direct sprite swap mm -hmm. there. Uh... Dreaded Lurgy is an infectious illness. A drop kick is an idiot. Oh, I think I get it. The Aussie salute is the flapping away of the ever-present flies from one's face. Hmm. Really right. making the uh, the continent sound appealing there. Mm -hmm. What do you think A over T means? Ass over tea kettle. Close. Arse over tit. Falling over in a very undignified way. So yes, actually, you're very way, close. Way to go, Australia, making it that little bit more vulgar. I would expect nothing less. All right, it looks like you do take a lot of damage in this game, but they do give you a whole lot of health pickups, so that's cool. I don't know if I like the two-gun mechanic, because you can... It's hard to, to aim. Anyway, what's what's your definition, Alex? A uh, two-pot screamer. A two-pot screamer. One who gets drunk easily in an, a less than dignified manner. That's me. I'm a two-pot screamer. I'm a three-pot screamer. Under the affluence of Incahal. That means drunk. I could see that. That's something like a drunk person would say. Like, what's the problem, Ossifer? All right, so we've also got Upshit Creek with only a fork to paddle with. You have complicated Upshit Creek without a paddle. Wow, they only have forks to paddle with over there. They got it bad. Let's see. Not give a hang. That means you don't care. Okay. Okay. I don't care. No room to swing a cat. That means you're in a very, very small space. So you say these checkpoints don't work? Did they work for you? I've tried. It's spinning. Okay, you got to spin. How'd you get to work? I don't know. I will not go mad. I will not... <laughs> Just entertain yourself with this book of Aussie slang I've handed you. Okay, you have to. Okay, you have to collect stars, and when you collect enough stars and use them, it makes it spin. Thank you, Playody. Oh, okay. Wow, I'm surprised anyone knew that. Way to go! It's awesome. All right. The Retro Pals chat, where uh, they know what they're talking about more than the actual Retro Pals. All right. Um. I I'm sorry. Three of these. Four of these! So, some of these are not suitable for stream. Uh, I don't think Alex realized just how many of them I was skipping over. Oh, no, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about all the ones that are just American slang. Like, keep your shirt on, I got kettle exploded. of fish, knuckle sandwich, kosher. I, I, no, those are all... Kosher? Yeah, meaning something's genuine. Kosher, something's kosher. Okay. You, you've heard, you've heard that slang before, right? Yeah, I have, but okay. it's not, like, uh, unique to Australia. <laughs> what you can't say okay yeah you see in some of these yeah some of these are for late night hbo not for us Extra let's ammo. see it's just not cricket means not the right thing to do mm. watching retro pals it's just not cricket don't do it okay so this one has changed meaning um Star, it's, Star. A Star. it's a take it's a take that now means situation is a deception or a fraud <laughs> So you're being taken for, basically. Oh, I see. That is makes it, more sense. Is oh, there... jeez, this guy. Yeah, I hate Grandpa. Kill Grandpa as fast as you can. He will... I found his pattern. Oh, he generates you when he steps on you. Yeah. And he, he doesn't back off, either. No, he doesn't. He, he, fucks, he fucks you up. I hate him. Grandpa's got the zoning down. Why is this so tough? It's a children's game. This is a game for Belgian children. Listen, that's a game for Belgian children, and this is a book for American perverts, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> that's not fair. Okay, I gotta get my head in the game. We have to beat at least level one. If we beat level one of Outback Joey, we can at least beat level one of Lucky Luke. Okay. Darn! So I will say that this game's incredible presentation may actually be to its detriment, because Lucky Luke is a little bit too big, and every part of him is a hitbox. Honey? Yeah? If it was raining custard, I'd only have a fork. That's to be very unlucky. I read one about custard already. Why, is, <laughs> why are so many idioms based around custard? We gotta eat custard here! I 
I cannot believe Hidden Giggle is tennis. Yeah, for, for female tennis players. Female tennis, okay. It says that. They got a special tennis for ladies over there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I had to make sure this was published in Australia. It was also first published in 2000. Uh -huh. Okay, so it's it's an, an ancient tone. Got him! Here. I got Grandpa. Good, thank you. Thank you for killing Grandpa. I've been avenged. Troll is pretty snappy. He doesn't have any momentum to him. Dude, he's been walking all night. Poor Lucky Luke. Yeah, a lot of the Belgian oh, comics do look a lot alike. I did it! I did it! I did it! Holy shit, Danny beat a level! That was really difficult. Alex was not... <laughs> he I told was, you. He wasn't putting on oh, airs or whatever. I'm just, <laughs> I'm still getting shot. Look at this. Thank you, Nick! Um, give me a minute here, Danny, or maybe 20. Uh, Nick just gifted 15 fucking subs to 15? the chat. 15? Is that a mistake? If it's not, thank you. Thank you. Holy crap. No, that looks about right. They're celebrating look out that celebrate. Uh, they're celebrating. They're dancing. So yeah, look. Look how happy they are. I gotta thank, uh, I gotta welcome everyone to the sub club. So welcome Wizard Man tonight. Love that name. Welcome Red Dorsal. Welcome Fred M. S. Loniker. Welcome Salvo Subs. Welcome Trace Bullet. Welcome Old School Lag, Dirk Hunting, Herkington, uh, Zazen44, Date.Zone, Alucard RDD, Lexen, Squidly Diddly. Oh, I love your cartoon. Fidgety Frolic, Marmot SRL, and Eogon IRL, and uh, Flemish Dog. Thank you. Welcome aboard, everybody. Enjoy your emotes. And thanks so much for handing out those subs. Holy yes, crap. thank you. You gotta do that. You dumped out back Joey. <laughs> you, got a, you got a free ticket to heaven as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny to me. <laughs> but you do. You do. Yeah. You do have a free... I th I'm just saying, you know, it would be great. You know, you know, back in the day when you used to have to pay to go to heaven or whatever, indulgences? Uh -huh. Yeah. What if you could do that with ROMs? Like, you could just give the Pope... Is that why he gave him Undertale? <laughs> Holy shit! All sorts of realizations coming to light on tonight's Retro Pals. Want a free ticket to heaven? Give the Pope a copy of Undertale. If he it's... puts it in his top 100, you get to enjoy the yeah, an infinite delight of uh, whatever heaven is. There's another grandpa! I'm sorry, I just... I never thought of the idea of giving games to to religious figures to. to hey, now you know why. Yeah, apparently. Perfect. Does it also work that way for confession? Well, do you do you, you okay okay so they like he just slips the priest a steam code and he's just like you wanna you wanna look the other way for, uh, for all that murder I did. You're like, all right, uh, well, we were going to have you do uh, 20 rosaries, but you just need to do, like, one Our Father, and you're good. Uh, okay, here is something about the game that may be an issue. Uh, apparently, you need to kill all the enemies on screen in order to progress at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the problem is I have no life here, and if I jump, I'm going to hit one of those two turtles. And you've also got the spike there next to you that you can, that you can get generated on. Yeah. Extremely brutal level design for otherwise a very simple game. Unfortunately, humble bundle codes are like the Nicene creeds of confessions. They're not worth much. Game over. Damn. Well, I made it to level two. Let's see if it gives me a continue option. I'm just saying, I'm wondering if DLC is worth more or, you know... Like, they think you cheap out if you give them a regular edition instead of a limited steel case edition. You have to give... Listen. You want to get into heaven, you need that fan gamer collector's edition of Undertale. God. I'm number one! I'm number one! Ass beat out Lucky and Alex. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, if it's delisted, it's worth way more, too. Oh, yeah. That gets, that gets you into super heaven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you, uh... I heard if you go to your local diocese and give the archbishop at least three different sealed uh, limited run games, uh, well, you can uh, just bypass a seminary and you're the new priest. Saved game? Did it save where I was? Please save.
is this level two? <laughs> They're very similar looking. No, this is no. level one. God! Ah, uh, well, it didn't give me an option to save my game. Not that it matters, because the save data on my CDI is absolutely fucked, and it cannot hold save data. But we did see two levels of Lucky Luke. A beautiful, gorgeous, and incredibly impossible game for the Philips CDI. Please consider it when you rank it uh, 20 or 30 minutes from now. Oh, yeah. You got any other games for tonight? I got one. I got one. This is a game that I've wanted to play for many, many, many years. Ever since I found out that this existed, I wanted to play it on Mascot Friday. I burned... I don't know if I should admit this. I burned at least 10 copies of this game trying to get it to work. I wasted 10 CDRs and several hours of my own time trying to get this to work. This game, unfortunately, is very rare. It was only recently discovered. I think it was actually dumped and ripped by Blazing Lasers, the guy who dumped Weather Kitchen, actually. So. Oh, shit. Thank you, Blazing Lasers. There you go, dude. I'm going to turn this off. But once this game existed, it was out on the internet. I tried to burn a copy just did not work. However, I have a feeling that however we end up playing this game, it's gonna work. It's a game that's so rare I wouldn't even admit to owning a real copy, even if I had one, so don't even think about it. Mm -hmm. But with any luck, this copy will work on this CDI. This is a very special one. Some of y'all may not know it exists. Some of y'all just found out about it last year. It's got a couple of videos on it, so it's not, like, totally unknown. But this is Pyramid Adventures for the Philips CDI. I'm excited. Do you know what this is? Absolutely not, but I'm still oh excited. Oh, my God. This will be No one tell me. Alex. Don't tell me. Oh, my God. Compact Disc Incorporated. Wow! They invented the compact disc. Hold on, I'm just trying to get this working. This was not on stream before. I think I tried to play it during a stream and it just would not go. It's summer vacation for young Dash Daniels. He and his cat Mozart are spending it in Egypt with Dash's aunt, Olivia Pitt, a okay. professor of archaeology. This character design look a little familiar? The pair are digging <gasps> near a recently discovered pyramid in a remote part of the Sahara yes. Desert, when they unearth what looks like a stone door. It's got a sassy cat in it. The hieroglyphs around the He's door got a reveal fucking that slingshot. the pyramid contains no. forgotten secrets of a long and healthy life. Go back to Springfield, Bart Simpson. Excited by their find, Dash wow. and his aunt dig out the sand yeah, from around this, the door. Is this who I think it is? Is and this it the suddenly animation rumbles team? Open, <gasps> revealing a dark passage beyond. This is a lost animation magic game. They enter cautiously, but suddenly the door slams shut behind them, sealing them inside. And you may think that's cool, but there's no animation. Oh, there is. <gasps> yes, yes! Well, Dash, we're in a bit of a jam. You can say that again, Aunt Olivia. <gasps> it's Link. It's fucking Link. Yes! Yes! Well, I'll be a Sphinx's whisker. <laughs> I am Tofu. Look at God them! Of wisdom, and you, Look Professor Pitt, them! and your nephew, Dash Daniels, are trapped Dash in the Daniels. lost pyramid. Dash but Daniels! But why us, oh wise guy? The <gasps> Pharaoh Antu. Wishes to Alex is losing his it. His four thousand year oh. reign undisturbed by the outside world. <laughs> is Anubis gonna be in this? Yo, how do you guys do that? <laughs> Listen, Dash, I am Yam, goddess of good health. Antu has cursed our pyramid. How can we help? <laughs> how can we help? Learn the secrets of our pyramid and restore to the goddess Yam what is hers. Cool. I shall certainly help destroy. What's happening? Dash, help me! <laughs> Olivia! Antu has captured her! <laughs> We've got to save her! It talks! It talks! Ah, but first you'll need some gold coins, Dash. May wisdom and good fortune be with you. Oh my god! Oh my god, is Anubis in this? 
Yes, ho, oh, healthy one. Can I go now? Let my Ankh of Truth and the Pyramid of Life guide you. Come on, Mozart. We've got to find Aunt Olivia and break this curse. Ugh. I am Antu, the Magnificent. You and your aunt will <laughs> never leave this pyramid. <laughs> Bummer. What an attitude. I thought he was going to say, what an asshole. He should. <laughs> Well, believe it or not, the Lost Animation Magic game is a fucking mascot platformer. <laughs> and we need to rank it here on Mascot Friday. Alex, take it away. Let me adjust the audio real quick. Now, for those unfamiliar, I'm pretty sure pretty much everyone is, uh, Animation Magic was the studio behind the Nintendo games released for... Um, the CDI. Him. They did the cutscenes for Hotel Mario, as well as Link Faces of Evil and Zelda Wand of Gamelon. And it looks like they kept the same voice actors for this, too. Now, weirdly enough, that animation there was actually powered by the digital video cartridge on the CDI. That's not something uh, that the previous Animation Magic games required. I think... Uh, did Mutant Rage bo uh, Body Slam require a digital video cartridge? I know the Nintendo games didn't. But in any case, this game came much later. It was thought to be unreleased for many years because there's so few copies out there. I've only ever seen two copies available on eBay. Does anybody know, do you know anything about how to play? I know nothing. Games? Okay. Well, if so I had the manual, I, I could I look at it. I kill him, but I'm going to try jumping on him, but I don't think that's going to work. Oh God, there's a lot of them. Oh, you do jump on them. Yeah, okay. it's a hop and bop. Okay, I know this. I know this. Oh, look at that Sphinx! Hotel Mario wasn't animation magic? Wow, the animation looks just like him, though. No, it wasn't that. Uh-oh. 4,000 years without a square meal. I'm hungry. Bring me a square meal. Better give him a square meal. So it turns out, like Lucky Luke, this is also in 1996, so super late. Um, this game doesn't have a slipcase, or at least I've never seen one, so I can assume this is a, a Europe exclusive. picked up a meal that was a square. Your items include the still stone, the vitamin powerball, the pyramid of life. Oh my god. In the upper right of the backpack, you can understand the USDA pyramid. I am hungry. <laughs> okay, give me a sec. I have a meal for you, I think. Oh, no, but you I You have do... a food bag, which contains 19 packets. I think those are the different foodstuffs you can get. Okay, I don't have the food... Is that the food bag? Mozart is your talking cat who comes and goes throughout the Lost Pyramid. What is this? Oh, fuck if I know. <laughs> Button one makes you jump. Uh, left and right makes you go left and right. Pressing button one opens the pack. Clicking and dragging a pack item to the hand makes the item available when you return to action. Okay, okay. And button two activates the, the hand item in the backpack, so you have to actually click and drag stuff. Okay, you well, may not you may not even have draggable stuff yet. Yeah, it's not it's just taking me to here and I don't know what this is. <laughs> yeah, this is episode one. Still waiting on episode two. I'm gonna leave this guy be. It's gonna come to Kickstarter any day now, I'm sure of it. Apparently the bedroll is very important. Okay, that's the thing that I think you have your items in. When you feed the Sphinx a balanced diet, he'll reward you with additional pyramid lives. Oh, how do I feed him? There's a save system as well. This is a very complicated game, and I am absolutely not going to do it. it not that I think it... Okay, everybody, yeah. look. Wow, what a rat! He's sneaking. Sorry. Can we just claim that as a Retro Pals character? If a game has fewer than three copies printed, can we just claim all the characters as our own? I don't think that's how copyright works. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Okay, well, it's how it works now. There's a nutrition action arcade. Pyramid 
adventures from the food pyramid. Oh, you just now got that? Yeah. Oh, I am... Through Treasures of the Lost Py... Wait a minute. Treasures of the Lost Pyramid? It's called Pyramid Adventures on the cover. Though Treasures of the Lost Pyramid is a hair-raising adventure within an Egyptian pyramid with equally thrilling arcade games along the way, a primary focus is to make children and adults aware of positive effects of a healthy lifestyle, a good balance of proper nutrition, exercise, and rest. That's been the theme of tonight's stream. I am hungry. The script for this multimedia nutrition education game for elementary school children was written by an elementary school teacher who has taught good health habits, including nutrition, for over 20 years. This person is unnamed, apparently. Don't worry about it. They're, they've done it. They're good. They've given their name to the food pyramid. <laughs> it doesn't belong to them anymore. The adventure urges an increased number of fruits, vegetables, I and grains in daily consumption. Okay, I am... You ready to hand over the controller? Did you do that? Oh, did I die? Maybe. It just took me here. Well... Very I... mysterious game. Yeah, here. Let me... Let me load up that thing you were looking at. Okay. Here you go. Be careful with it. Here we go. I'm going to start over from the beginning. This is a Pyramid Adventures Episode 1 speedrun. Let's do it. All right. Good Start luck. the timer. One, two, three. I'm just going to count up in real time. Uh, 12, 24. Shit, you fucked it up already. Sorry. You know, I'm just going to read. Uh... Oh, you are being given advice by tofu and yam. I thought I just misheard them say thoth. Huh. No, apparently all the gods here are made up. Okay, that's probably... Hey, shout out to the people in Animation Magic for not wanting to get themselves cursed. Smart. That's cool. Very smart. So let's look at the positives here, specifically comparing this to Link the Faces of Evil and so on. Uh, this controls way better. It's not as stodgy as the Nintendo Animation Magic games. You can actually jump on top of enemies. It feels more like a mascot platformer than any of the Zelda games did. Scrolling is not 60 frames per second, but still looks pretty good. And the backgrounds. Look at this background. That looks so nice. People worked on this. Can you? Okay, because there's a bag. 4,000 years without a square meal. I'm oh, it's hungry. ammo. The bag says ammo. Bring I'm done. Yeah, it's ammo. Meal. Let's get some ammo. Got it. So apparently your slingshot uh, shoots rice cakes. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. You have other items you can get, including um, the vitamin powerball and the amulet of broccoli. Okay. Did you already tell me about the worm whacking wheel? I think so. Okay. Okay, I can use the slingshot now. Okay, good. Yeah, no. Get, get it. Get up. Get up, kid. Kid. Kid, you're, up. you're covered in scorpions. <laughs> kid. Uh, did pressing the up button work? There we go, you have to push it up. Okay. I figured out how to shoot. Oh, you can actually aim downward. I am hungry. Yeah, 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 you you're like hungry. To that guy. I don't. Well, I, I think they're pleasant, personally. <laughs> Looks like this is a door I can't enter. Yeah. Alright, do you want me to read you the backstory here? Yeah, sure. Hey, uh, this was done by funding from a place I've never heard of, the National Cancer Institute. That sounds fake. I haven't heard of that, but I'm going to take their word for it. Okay. Cutscene, cutscene, cutscene. Oh, boo. Okay, so. <laughs> I don't know if there's any other cutscenes in this. Dash's summer vacation. When Dash Daniels was invited to Egypt by his archaeologist, Anne, he never dreamed he would have such an adventure. Aunt Olivia Pitt uncovers an unknown pyramid in the Sahara Desert. There are rumors of the lost pyramid and its untold mysterious treasures, but Dash never believed he would be a part of this thrilling discovery. Dash has kept Mozart and Aunt Olivia uncovered a stone door and entered the pyramid. The door rumbles shut behind them and they are trapped. Tofu, the god of wisdom, and Yam, the goddess of health, appear before them and give Dash some magical gifts and advice, telling him that the pyramid holds the secret of a long and healthy life. Suddenly, Aunt Olivia begins to discover, disappear, sorry, not discover, well, she is discovering, anyways. Mm -hmm. When she is gone, Yam and Tofu tell Dash he must save her, and in doing so, break Look the curse. Look at the crocodile. 
It looks like the crocodile from Outback Joe. Yeah, so much good croc content tonight. Look at the spoon. Oh, I like that. Again, I ask you, why do people put so much work into games that produce five copies? They probably didn't know the games would have print runs of five each. Ooh, right. ooh, look at this. Look at this guy. Pock. Okay. Animated scene, please. Please. Please, God. Please, God, animated scene. Uh. Slap him! Uh, okay. Okay, slap food into his mouth. Okay. You think he likes lobster? Yes. No, he does not. Okay, it looks like you need a healthy food. 2% milk. Okay. No. Try grains. He's, he's lactose intolerant. Grains are at the bottom of the food pyramid, so that might be what you need. You That's egg? an egg. That's not a grain. Again, try the cereal. That might... Bran muffin? That's a grain, yeah. <laughs> okay. He's climbing the thing, so yeah. Try... There you go. Dude loves bran muffins. All right, so... Cereal flakes? Yeah. We're feeding this guy breakfast, I guess. Yeah, 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 I'm getting it. We're climbing the food pyramid. Shout out to the Grain Council. You did it! Yes! 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 Bran muffins are good. I don't want to play again. Okay, I had some merch mentioning uh, my spouse and I worked on an educational game for four years and never left beta and had something like 45 minutes of hand-drawn animation. And that oh is my so god! Sad. Yeah, when you consider the stuff that never came to light, that makes sense how much effort would be put into these games. That's why, Jeez. I'm, such, that's why I'm such a big proponent of stuff being dumped and released because like people, people made these games. People yeah. worked fucking hard. It's easy to forget that, but real people <laughs> were involved in the makings of this. They probably had to work really hard. They might have crunched. And getting their work out there allows us to appreciate it. Yeah, so thank you to everyone who fucking dumps these types of games. Thank you. I'm just really glad that someone's out there looking out for Philips CDI rarities mm -hmm. to dump. Because we that wouldn't be able to play this. We wouldn't be able to play uh, Weather Kitchen. Mm -hmm. And we wouldn't be able to play Outback Joey. Tying it all together. Uh well. Now you're trying to buy good meals, good food for, uh, what's his face? The chicken breast is probably good. I need, to, I need to restock on the brand muffins. <laughs> we kind of had a run on those. And, uh, let's have a turnover. Some bacon. Mm -hmm. Some bacon. That's... Some bacon. Okay. Eclair. Oh, delicious. I'm gonna stuff Anubis full of eclairs. Okay. See what he thinks of that. I really do hope we get to see cool dog guys in this. That's there's been a, a lack of that. We got our pastas, we got our artichokes. Okay, I think we're done. We may have filled up our entire inventory, in fact. No, I'm done. Let me be done. Okay. Maybe you can go back to that Sphinx now and be like, all right, here you go. Oh, good idea, yes. Yeah, let's, I read it. Let's thing. actually do that. Yeah. So, what do you think, Alex? Based uh, on knowing nothing about this and then suddenly having this thrust upon you? I love it. It's pretty great. Oh, that's not the Sphinx. Oh, no, that's the mini game. Yeah, it's the mini game. Can I exit? No, you gotta, you gotta shove him with Bran Muffin. Go, go, go. Son of a. Okay. Bran Muffin. My Bran Muffins. Okay. I hope that first guy doesn't want any bran muffins. It's okay. You got other foods. <laughs> yeah, now this is gaming. <laughs> we got to think about the square meals. We got to think about what the pharaoh would like. We got to worry about these little crocodile freaks. This seems a little more linear than the, uh, the Zelda game. Hmm, you think so? It feels more linear, yeah, in, in the sense that it just... It feels like you have fewer environments to look at. That could be, yeah. I don't think there exists a full long play of this, actually. So who even knows? Who is willing to take on the mysteries of Pyramid Adventures? Look at that rat! A God with, damn! A game with three copies printed that may or may not run on your Philips CDI, and yes, you need an actual CDI because nothing emulates this. <laughs> Boing! <laughs> uh, I think he's hungry. Yeah, well... 
It's so okay. am I. We all are. Don't worry. We've got like. I'm hungry for games. Well, hey, guess what? You are full as can be. Where's some Australian slang? Oh, right. I want to open my pack. Maybe we should eat something. Uh, see, this is the USDA food pyramid. Up here at the top is fats, oils, and sweets. These are the things you should eat the most of. That's why they're at the top. Mm -hmm. We got the milk group. Two or three servings of milk and stuff. Milk products. Meat, legumes, high protein group. Just a little bit of that. Maybe you want some fruits. Maybe you want some vegetables. And uh, bread is to be used sparingly. Got all that? Got it. Luckily, I can't eat bread anyway, so... Yeah, exactly. Oh, wait, I wanted to eat something. I should let him starve. <laughs> no, we can't do that. You don't want a cookie blare it up? He's fine. I'm going to give him something to eat, see? Oh, look at this. Do what do we want to eat? Let's, let's, yeah, let's give him some bacon. You're like, bacon, that's so bad for you. That's some epic bacon. <laughs> want some more bacon. Oh, do you have to sleep too? Stuff this kid full of bacon and seal him in a pyramid. <laughs> Alright. What do you think of that, you little fucker? You should be able to jump like ten times higher. He does move faster! He moves faster after he eats the bacon. Well, he has nutrition in him now. The pork nutrition. What a fascinating game this is. So much thought put into it, and then it was just kind of released. Mm -hmm. Well, now that we have food... I am hot. Uh-huh. Let's go feed this fucker his square meal. Dude, you're covered in scorpions. You ever see that uh, animated X-Men clip where Wolverine is covered in scorpions? Yeah. <laughs> it's good. I just want bacon. So I okay. Hate to that guy. You know how to cook bacon. Oh, there though. you go. I do. I learned how to cook bacon. Give him a bran muffin. You know that's what the game wants. The game wants you. Not an eclair? Well, we've come so far, I probably please, shouldn't fuck please. it up on purpose. Let's, let's give him a bran muffin. Remember in the 90s when it was like, oh, bran muffin's the most healthy thing you can eat? Mm hmm. Maybe give him a vegetable. Like a. Give him some milk too. Just the whole cart and shove it in his mouth. Yeah. Maybe a nice banana. Okay. Click on done. Maybe that's why you did it. Are you not happy? Are you not satiated? Oh, wait. I am hungry. <sighs> okay. Well, there's no clear indication of just how much food you have to stuff into this guy's face in order to make him happy. So... I th think it's about time to rank. No. Hang on. Wait. How no. Do save? How do I continue? It won't let me pick continue. And it skips over save game. Um, um, hmm, you lost, we are being told. It looks like I lost. We did not feed the guy enough food, and therefore we get kicked back to the CDI menu. That sucks. Well, that's Pyramid Adventures, one of the rarest Philip CDI games, right up there with the Weather Kitchen. I'm pretty sure I've seen exactly as many copies of Pyramid Adventures as Weather Kitchen, so you could probably trade straight up. <laughs> Who even knows, though? <laughs> Who even knows? <laughs> Tell you what I'll do. I'll put Lucky Luke back in, and then we can use that as background music. Okay, cool. All right, folks, guess what? It, it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> but it is officially ranking time. That's right. Get out your spreadsheets. Get out your copies of Excel. 
because we are ranking the mascots. Folks, we have come to the time of Mascot Friday where you have to rank the mascots you have just seen live in action on this stream. If you think these games are better than Bubsy Claws Encounters of the Third Kind for Super Nintendo and Genesis, give us an RP Angel Bubsy. If you think it's worse, give us an RP Devil Bubsy. Got it? Got let's it. Let's go. Well, let's let's start up Lucky Luke first. I'm just. How do we even rank Pyramid? Uh, we're gonna do it somehow. We're gonna do it mm -hmm. somehow. We have to soldier through. <laughs> I'm gonna give you all a few minutes to uh, consider your thoughts on Outback Joey before we make a final ranking here. CDI games load slow, did you know? A little bit. A little bit. Them in their single speed drive. Lucky Luke, the video game. There he is. Now let's see if we can just linger at the title screen. Okay, that looks good. I don't know what I think of this as a theme for a Mascot Friday rankings, but that's what I wanted, and that's what we got. Folks, ranking time is now. Are you ready? Yes. Game number one is the previously undumped and undiscovered, but undiscovered no more, Outback Joey for Sega Genesis. Is Outback Joey better or worse than Bubsy? All right, folks, I'm already seeing devils. People were bringing out the devil Bubsies ahead of time. <laughs> Nick put out the devil Bubsy. Okay. <laughs> um. Now, uh, I told Nick, first of all, that I had incredible awesome possum vibes from this game. Luckily, I don't think it's that bad, but, um, well, even in the best conditions, like I said, when you don't have to pedal a bicycle for two hours to play the simple platformer, it still kind of plays like garbage. Kind of unfortunate, because it has a lot going for it. The character art's really good, the background art's great, it's got some good chubby crocs in there, mm -hmm, if that's mm -hmm, what you're into. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot to like for everyone, but unfortunately, in terms of gameplay, I'm going to have to give this a devil bubsy. Sorry, Outback yeah. Joey. I've been waiting years to find you. I didn't even know what you were. And now that I know what you are, uh, I don't like you all that much. Sorry, Joey. But at least you're out there. At least you're out there. So, what's the point of comparison? You mentioned Awesome Possum. Shall we start there? Yeah, let's let's start with Awesome Possum. Pretty sure, like I said, this is going to be better than Awesome Possum. Oh, yeah. The freaking, oh. The freaking Lucky Luke just started Captain to... Novelin is there. Okay. okay. Oh, yes. That Captain is Novelin. the point of comparison. Excellent. Yes. Captain Novelin, also a big pile of crap. <laughs> I don't know whether I liked playing Captain Novelin more or less than Outback Joey. They're pretty uh, much equivalent, so maybe we should rank it just like right around there. Okay, so folks, is it above Captain Novelin between Trash It and Captain Novelin, or is it between Captain Novelin and Ghost Manor? So essentially, above Cool World, that's not near Captain Novelin. <laughs> Slightly better than Captain Novelin, a little bit below Novelin, above Novelin, above, above, okay. Above, we're get, we're above. getting this all okay, sorted it's out. Above. It's above. It's above Captain Novelin. Officially better than Captain Novelin. Wow. All right. That was Outback Joey. Outback am... Joey. Way to go. Surprise? You beat Captain Novelin. You beat Awesome Possum. You even beat Wayne's World. Pretty good for a game that no one knew about. Western Technologies and the good folks at Heartbeat. Beep, beep. <laughs> Thank you, Heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Remember Heartbeeps? Anyway. <laughs> Please. Moving on from Outback Joey, Joey to a game that came from the Outback, Lucky Luke, the video game for Philips CDI. Is that better or worse than Bubsy, do you think? This may be a, a closer call. Angel equivalent... Okay, okay, okay. Several equivalents, so you, it's going to be around Bubsy. But I don't see many devils, so it may just barely end up edging out Bubsy, a phrase I never hope to say again. Yeah, it looks like he's beating Bubsy. He is definitely beating Bubsy. Wow, way to go, Lucky Luke. Who knew that a Philips CDI platformer, of all things, could be better than Bubsy? Well, uh, The Apprentice was, which mm -hmm. was from the same developers as Lucky Luke. You know what? We should compare. Yeah, where is that Apprentice? Apprentice is in the 200s, it looks like. Yeah, it's about right here between Tailgater and Mr. Nuts Hoppin' Mad. 
Now, personally, this may just be my own reviewer's tilt speaking, but <laughs> I enjoyed The Apprentice a lot more than Lucky Luke. The character was smaller, more maneuverable. Uh, we got to see several of the later levels, which seemed to be pretty well designed. It had a lot of anime babes in it. Lucky Luke, beautiful, gorgeous game for Philip CDI. Unfortunately, a very large character, so you're going to end up taking a lot of damage. So in the end, maybe not as fun as The Apprentice. Okay. But how much less fun? Is it as good as, oh, a boy in this blob on the NES? Hmm. You broke my brain with that comparison. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm comparing here. I'm a horrible critic, yes. Um... Uh, let's see, saying, don't rank it above Getsu Fuma Den. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. We're all pretty high up here. Um, yeah, I guess it's not. Camp California. Now, there's a good point of comparison. Ooh, okay. Camp California. That is a game that I like and which uh, Glitch Witch likes and no one else. Oh, thank you, Glitch Witch. <laughs> Someone's got to rep the Camp <laughs> California. I don't know. I think Lucky Luke was a little bit better than Camp California, even though I could play through the whole Camp California and enjoyed it even. Hear me out. Between Camp California and Moon Crystal. Folks, what do you think? That sounds reasonable to me. But maybe I'm being unreasonable. I got Lucky Luke pointing a gun at me right now. I'm probably unreasonable. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Sounds fine. Do it. Okay. Do it. Put her there. All right. Between Moon Crystal and Camp California. I feel good Lies about this. Lucky Luke. And the good news is we have plenty of other Lucky Luke games to play. And actually, they all look kind of shitty <laughs> compared to the CDI game. So that'll be pretty interesting if like a Super Nintendo Lucky Luke doesn't end up being as good as the CDI one. We shall see. We shall see. Okay. I'll In either case, glad to have a copy of that. Thank you again, Frappe Fiasco, yeah, for that. thank you. A true landmark of the Philips CDI. <laughs> I'll look up the info here later. Okay. And, uh... and our final game for the evening, the nutritional edutainment game, Pyramid Adventures, Episode 1 for Philip CDI. Is that better or worse than Bubsy? Consider, if you will, animation magic. They are both of those things. Devil, devil. Okay. Okay. Sing a lot of... Okay. Oh, people turning on Pyramid Adventures? Jeez. Do you blame them? It's would, fucking Pyramid Adventures. It would be a real shame if someone spent years trying to track down a copy and they <laughs> play it for 20 minutes and people hate it. <laughs> but such is life. It looks like Pyramid Adventures is being sent directly to hell. Good. Okay, we have a couple a couple non-haters in the audience. Thank you. It had you. potential. The graphics were amazing. The character art, uh, aside from the human characters, I liked. It had some good little crocodile people. The backgrounds, once again, amazing. The, it had potential, like going around a pyramid, shopping from vending machines for bran muffins and stuffing them into a sphinx's face. Mm -hmm. That sounds amazing. And somehow it was kind of less than amazing. But I wanted to like it, and that's the important part. It was what it was so i'm seeing a point of comparison to outback joey which is better i would say this is better than outback joey so above outback joey can't put it below outback i gotta joey. give pyramid adventures the win there yeah it's above outback joey for sure okay where was outback joey there's outback joey so above outback joey <sighs> it's not worse than pickle wars it's not worse than johnny bazooka tone Let's is it worse up. than wild woody no. no okay we're being very affectionate here but Beethoven second. There's a good point of comparison when it comes to clunky platforming. Woof. Sorry. Be <laughs> it's woof indeed, huh? <laughs> you got me there. Mm -hmm. Beethoven makes me depressed. <laughs> <laughs> Pyramid <laughs> Adventures did not. I can't okay, really... Okay, then above, then above. I, I'm going above. I, that's I'm not a thing above. I can quantify. It's just a thing I feel. Okay, how about... We're putting it pretty high. How about Little Nicky and the Blues Brothers? Now we're talking. How about between Little Nicky and the Blues Brothers? Does that sound about right to anyone? Folks. Sandwiched in between Little Nicky and the two Blues Brothers. Is Pyramid is Patrol. Is a pyramid? That sounds really uncomfortable. And not Pyramid Patrol. Pyramid Adventure. We've played too many pyramid games on this stream. That would put it beneath Risky Woods and Hoy. Games that I have huge problems with, but they aren't necessarily as bad as something like, well, Pyramid Adventures. I'm seeing above Blues Brothers, between Blues Brothers and Fire Rock. I'm actually okay between Blues Brothers and Fire Rock. Okay. 
you know okay. what? Going once, going twice. Anyone want to make the? Anyone want to make that argument? Uh, while we're waiting, thank you, Fizzy Rabbit VR, for the three hundred bits. Really do appreciate that. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. So between Fire Rock and Blues Brothers, three hundred bits sent directly into the food pyramid. Yeah, Fire Rock gets better. Which I'm gonna is put those in the vending machine and uh, get a lot of bacon. Sounds Do you think good. we lost because we stuffed our kid full of bacon? I think so. And the game didn't like that? They're like, oh, your child's dead now. Also, you didn't go to sleep. Oh, yeah, I didn't think of mm -hmm. that. Sounds good. Between Blues Brothers and Little Nicky. I I need one more vote for Between Blues Brothers and Fire Rock before I can do it. Who wants to be Who the wants deciding to do vote? It? Who wants to say it? Who wants the final say on Pyramid Adventures Episode 1? Just one more person. It's all you need. You can be you. We gotta you get can this be the tiebreaker. We got to get this in before Episode Fire 2. Fire Rock is better. Well, then we're putting it below. Yes. We, okay. Fire. So between Blues Brothers and Fire Rock. I'm going to count that as a... Yeah, do that. Okay. Between Fire Rock for the Famicom Disk System and the Blues Brothers for the Super Nintendo is Pyramid Adventures Episode 1 for the Philips CDI. You know, I'm really glad we could play that. That, that game had been eaten away at me for years. Just I knew it was a mascot platformer, but I didn't have any way to play it. Luckily, uh, circumstances allowed that to happen. Do you know who the uh, publisher is on that bad boy? Um, I was going to say, if you have a, a picture of the manual, it might be on that. Compact Disc Interactive. So, I'm just going to put it in Philips. Oh, Compact Disc Interactive. That's what I remember that now. No, Compact Disc Incorporated. That's what it says. I had to really uh, squint Compact at it. Compact Disc Incorporated. That sounds Yeesh. like a fake-ass name, but whatever. For the purposes of our list, it works. And there we go. We've ranked the games. How do we feel about ourselves? I feel uh, very well exercised. I feel mm -hmm. very nourished with good food that I got from the pyramid. I'm just stuffed full of bran muffins. Speaking of which, we got to end the stream. Oh, God. God. Oh, God. No, no. <laughs> That was a fun one. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to the world premiere of Outback Joey. So glad that guy's out there now. Mm -hmm. Glad out there doing his thing. Maybe someday emulation can reach the point where it's playable and fun. Maybe someone can hack it to turn it into a real platformer. <laughs> maybe I'm thinking, maybe I'm just wishing too much, but we wish Outback Joey well. Thank you, Outback Joey, for your appearance. Mm -hmm. uh, the check's in the mail. Yeah, and thanks once again for everyone who dumped and, and emulated that helping this thing become a reality after so many years. Yeah, thank you, Nick. Thank you, Mike. Do appreciate it. Yeah, good stuff. I feel good about this one. <laughs> and we're done. That's it. You know what that means. As of this moment, it is the weekend. Yes, finally. Folks, stop working right now. You put put your work. work down. Stop it. It's the weekend. You got to enjoy your weekend. You have to tell your boss to shove it or else. <laughs> well, you don't got to do not. that. Maybe but not. Maybe not. But... It, it would just, all you got to do is have a pleasant weekend, all right? Mm -hmm. You don't got to go nuts with it. Just just have a nice one. That's all I want. <laughs> uh, let's see. Hmm. Well, this is where I'd tell you about the new patron poll, but we kind of didn't have internet on Wednesday, so we're going to have to push that back to next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, 7 p.m. Central, we are playing that X-Files FMV game for PS1. I figured out how to do it. We're going to do it. It's all up to spectrum now, if uh, <laughs> if it allows us to, to play it on the internet for people. Please do it. Please be normal, Spectrum. I'm hoping. I'm really hoping. Well, I'll advertise something. Our Pride store is open. That's right. Our merch store that only opens during Pride is back open. So if you would like to purchase Retro Pals merch uh, that looks banging, thank you. That, d that design it. is banging, Alex. Thank you. Credit to thank Alex you. for that design. It's super thank good you. looking. I, I like, it's funny, because the only shirt, a lot of the shirts apply to me, and the only one that I can't, the, the one that I like the most is the lesbian one, which does not apply to me, the only shirt that doesn't. <laughs> but it's my favorite. I think the leaning looks really good. Consider it MLM WLW Solidarity. Beautiful shirt. That's a lot All of letters. Shirts. It is. I am a lot of letters in general. Um, but yeah, I do consider those if you'd like to support us that way. We're also on YouTube, youtube.com slash retropals. We posted our... Uh, is it still Pac-Man 2 that went up, or did Trico go up? Oh, yeah. Pac-Man 2 is oh, the new video up. this week. That's okay, a complete good. playthrough. That's a great game. One of my favorites. Go watch it if you haven't. It's really funny. Big Danny, recommend for Pac-Man 2. Danny plays through the entire game and tortures that poor, that poor, poor critter. Yeah. We're, we're done. I'm done with video games. I'm done with streaming. I'm done with this week and ready to enjoy the weekend. Oh, yeah. Folks, we are rating Dot Level, who is playing Mado Monogatari for the Mega Drive. Uh, previously, she played through the PC Engine arcade card version of the game. It's amazing. This is, if you're unfamiliar, it's a dungeon crawler prequel to the Puyo Puyo series starring uh, that little girl, Arla. 
Oh yeah, that one. She's she's kind of she's kind of a freakazoid. This kindergartner. She 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 does a lot of weird stuff. She beats up on monsters. It's a good time. It's freak so stuff. So go enjoy that. Have a good rest of your evening and weekend, and we'll see you later. Thanks for watching. See ya, folks. <laughs>